Bismillah wassalatu wassalamu ala Rasulillah my dear beautiful brothers and sisters assalamu alaikum warahmatullah in these days it seems like muslims today are hanging on to shortcuts all of us would want our dua to be accepted and our affairs to be sorted out without us doing pretty much anything except just saying one thing that has become widely spread between muslims today is the act of asking people to make dua for you Today, somebody said, I'm going through some hardship. Would you please make lots of dua for me that Allah facilitates this? And then two, three, four, five people say, may Allah make it easy for you. I mean, I feel good about it. But uh, is this actually what had happened before at the time of Rasulullah Sallam? Would the Sahaba radiallahu anhu every time go to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and ask him to make dua for them? Well, actually not. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has given us a mouth And he has given us a set of eyes and ears and a heart and everything else to help us recognize him, get to know him, and also know how to make the dua so that we get from him what it is that we want from ourselves. A lot of people live in a land called shirk. And this is how it happens. They believe that by increasing the number of people to make dua for them, they would get their affairs sorted out. Such a belief leads to shirk and has shirk in it. So you want to make sure that the first one that you want to ask is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not rely on the number of people or how long their beards are or how good their hijab is. You have got a mouth and you have got a heart. So use what Allah has given you to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, we have not been left alone. I.e. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught us how to make proper dua. What are the etiquettes of making dua, which a lot of people today don't know. And they make, they wing the dua like this. And they expect great results from that. And when they get nothing, they get mesmerized. I've been making dua, but it didn't work for me. But actually, that is not how the cookie crumbles. You want, if you want to get something from Allah, you want to get it from Allah on his terms and conditions, not on your terms and conditions. After all, remember, when you want to donate some money to a cause, you always want to kind of almost like control the money after you give it, you still want to control it as where it goes. But when it comes to getting something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we always give him the lowest of the deals. billah. In Al-Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has spoken about a particular surah. And that surah in Al-Quran, if we understand properly how to apply it, how to understand it, how to interact with it, believe me, it don't matter how big your problems are, you will always be in a state of serenity, calmness. And when you are calm, your heart is not troubled, your mind is not troubled, your thinking process is not troubled, and your heart doesn't get possessed by a shaitan who is going to scare you due to your situation. And at that moment there, you will find yourself in a state that a lot of people would not understand. But you would certainly understand it because you'd be the closest possible to how good you will be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Al-Quran, there is a surah called Surah to Shah which they translate in the English meaning to the relief. It is uh, surah number 94, right after surah Al-Duha, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَمْ نَشْرَحْ لَكَ صَدَرَكَ وَبِضَعْنَا عَنْكَ يُزْرَكَ الَّذِي أَنْقَضَ ظَهَرَكَ وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْصَبَ وَإِلَى رَبِّكَ فَرْغَبْ which in English translates to some meanings like this. Have we not expanded your breast for you? Or did we not expand your breast for you? And we removed from you your burden, which has weighed upon your back, or which weighed down your back, and raised high for you your repute, or raised high for you your fame. Surely with difficulty is ease. Indeed, with hardship comes ease. So when you have finished your duties, then stand up in worship to Allah and to your Rabb direct your longing or to your Lord be desirous of his grace. So this is the words in English. As you can see, it does not have life. So let me take you on a journey towards this surah here, this surah Ash-Sharh 94, so that you can start using it as a tool in your happiness toolbox on how you sort out your problems. 
and you'll see there is a great beautiful message in there. When you look at this surah here, Alam Nashrah Laka Sadrak, it starts with a question, which in English translates, haven't we expanded your breast? But actually that is just a literal terminology, horrible translation. Look at it from this point here. Allah is speaking to the Prophet وسلم, and Surah Al-Sharh, this surah here, came in Mecca, where the Muslims were going through hardship, punishment, tortures, and everything, embargoes, and name it, and they were going through it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Rasulullah Sadrak. Al-Sharh in Arabic is when you make something extremely simple, when you ease it up, and if it's a topic, you explain it. In English, it translates like to explain it to him, make it easy, make it smooth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, A sadr is the chest. And what actually does the chest contain? You will see that it contains two elements that are vital to our moods. It has the heart, which holds the emotions, and it has your lungs for breathing. And subhanallah, Sometimes when you are at ease, there are no problems, and you are happy, you find yourself breathing easily, and your heart, you feel good, and actually the more happier you are, the easier the breathing is. You don't even pay attention to the motion of your lungs. Now, look when you have something in your heart that is weighing you down. How does your breathing go? How, how do you feel like when you breathe? How does it feel? Doesn't it feel heavy? Doesn't it feel like your chest is very tightened? That's because the emotions that you go through in your heart directly affect your oxygen intake. And because of your oxygen intake, it also affects your brain. When you are at ease, the oxygen is coming in and subhanAllah, the brain gets its oxygen and everything is going good and you don't pay attention to it. But subhanAllah, when you're going through hardships, guess what? If you have a stress at school or at work or with your husband or life in general, or bills or money, whatever it is, your heart starts feeling these dark emotions and then your breathing gets affected, your brain gets affected and the chest tightens and narrows down. In those times, well, that is when shaitan comes to you and says, ha, 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 the future is bleak. There is no way out. This problem ain't going to get a solution. And it don't matter how much you make dua. Look, you've been making dua for so long and it's not been answered. At that moment there, when your heart is really heavy, when your chest is really tight, that is when shaitan comes to really go and put the clamp on your heart again so that you really lose hope in everything. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you, just a second, my subservient. And remember, we are not servants and we are not slaves to Allah. We are subservient Muslims. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you, my abd, my subservient, is this the very first time in your life that you are going through hard times? Well, the obvious answer is no. This is not the very first time. There has been so many times before. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you, look back in the past. Join the dots together. Look. Have you been before in a situation like this or worse? You go, yes. And then Allah says, says haven't we expanded your chest for you? Haven't we expanded your chest, your heart at one point when you were through hardship? Didn't you go through all these heavy times? And as I said before, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the act of worship alone, he says, I but when he speaks about himself, where so many of his attributes are involved, then he uses the term we. For example, here, Alam Nashrah Laka Sadr, there is the attribute of Ar Rabb, the one who takes care of you. That's involved. Ar Rahma, the mercy, that's the attribute, second one. Al Lutf, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows more about yourself than you about yourself. And then Al-Kareem, the generosity. As you can see, I've already mentioned four attributes that are involved. And when they are all involved, then you say, we. I'll give an example. Let's say you are a parent uh, and you speak to the ch uh, somebody and you tell him, I helped you. As an individual, I helped you. However, if you wrote him a letter, if you gave them money, if you helped them do the dishes, if you drove them, if you fed them, then there are so many attributes that are there. You tell them, well, we did help you. Meaning, 
there, it's almost like there are five times of you and you did all this work, different jobs. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are no five of him. So I'm just talking here about the attributes. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you, look back to the past. Have you been through a hardship and difficulties? The answer is yes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, haven't I expanded your heart in the past? And as a result and fellowship with that, the way you breathed and the way you felt, the answer is yes. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you, just like in the past when you felt all the troubles, couldn't have a solution, today you've gone through the hardship. Allah tells you, look at the past, how I helped you. And if you do the same thing or you do more, I will help you more. Just like when you eat food, where do you feel the satisfaction? You feel it in your belly because that's where the food goes. The same thing here. When you are happy and content, you feel it in your heart. And when it's in the heart, it's the whole upper chest. Look at this. If you want to hug your child, where do you pull them to? To your stomach, to your legs, or to your chest? You bring them closer to the chest. Because at that moment there, when you are hugging somebody, either a child or your partner or whatever, you are bringing some comfort. There is something, some energy that happens there. That energy which takes place at chest level is what actually affects our lives, positively or negatively. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, Alam nashrah laka sadrak. Haven't we expanded your heart and also as a result to that, your chest and you felt like so expanded, so easy? You go, yes. And then subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَوَضَعْنَا عَنْكَ وِزْرَكَ A wizard is whatever is heavy. It's the heavy burden or the heavy, that's why it's called the wazir. The wazir is the one who carries the heavy burden of the king. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when your heart is tightened, your breathing is affected, your emotions are down, you feel like you're carrying the world on your shoulders. You feel like you have a heavy load on your back, on your shoulder. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you that heavy load that you carry when you are going through hard times, if it had a sound, it would be like the squeaking of a door. So many problems that happen to us, people, their voice changes, the way they walk changes. When you have problems, watch people how they walk, they curb. They become like an arch, subhanAllah, as if they are carrying a heavy load on them. If you sit there and you watch people walking, you can pretty much say who is happy because you see them, they are too tall, busy enjoying because the chest is expanded and everything is fine. But when you have a problem, you curb and your head goes down, subhanAllah. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, remember in the past when you were having difficulties, we expanded your chest and then you started feeling good and you stood tall because we had lifted up the weight which had weighed you down back then. And Allah tells you, if I did it back in time, I will do it for you right now. So why are you going through all these anxiety problems? Uh -huh. Now now the solution is starting to get back to you. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ وَرَفَعْنَا is when you raise something up in the air. When you look in the books of Tafsir, they always talk about this surah to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Yes, it was to him when he was alive. Now he is dead, it is for us. It is for us. So how can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or how would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise my dhikr? My dhikr is what people remember you by. And here is a very good thing. If you are good in the community, even when you are going through difficulties, you will find a lot of people would help you. People that you have helped before, even if you go through a stressful time, you might go through a hardship, but your status, your value, your importance in the community is still raised. Why is that? Because you never linked your ego with your position. You never linked your ego with your status. You never linked your ego with your fortune. You are the easy, loving person. Either you drove a Mercedes or you drove a two-wheel uh, bicycle. It don't matter that much. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you, look around you. People love you. Your family loves you. Your children, you mean the world to them. 
Your partner, they love you. People that you work with, they love you. People who you know, Muslim people, in normal circumstances, they love you. So you are well regarded in the community. It's not just like this stressful time I come in here to you that you feel completely flat, that nobody likes you. No, 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 no. Especially if you are a good person in Islam and you have a good relationship with Allah. Allah will put in the heart of people that they will love you and they will speak good of you and they will only look at you with the eyes of admiration. And if you need them, you can call upon them to help you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make them help you. Why? Because your status is raised in front of them. Allah tells you, look back in the past. Weren't you in problems sometimes before? You go, yes. Did your chest go tight and your breathing got affected and your emotions were down? You go, yes. Allah says, didn't I expand your chest and made your breathing better and your heart and everything went good? And you go, yes. Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, didn't I raise the, the heavy burden on your shoulders and you start feeling light and life came back to you? And you go, yes. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you, didn't before, didn't I before make people love you and your status and your value in the community and your family high? And you go, yes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you, so why are you worried now? These are days they go and come back. It happened to you in the past and you got happy. Now you're going through another period where you are actually unhappy and things are tightening up on you. This is a period of time and you're going to go back how you were before. So why are you giving the opportunity to shaitan to paint the present and the future as dark as possible? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you, Can you raise your value and your status? And know this reality. Now, remember the very first three ayat Allah speaks in the past. Haven't I? Haven't I? Haven't I? But now he shifts the conversation into a whole new level. The speech now turns into now. يُسْرَى When you translate these words in English, they don't relate really the real meaning. But I will try my best to bring the meaning to you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after having told you about the past and how he has helped you in the past, he brings another dimension to the situation. He tells you, that is what happened to the past and I have helped you. Now, I tell you, with every difficulty, there is easiness. And then he says it again a second time, and with every difficulty, there is easiness. In English, it doesn't mean nothing. But in Arabic, subhanallah, inna ma'al usri yusra. Al usr, which is difficulty, is a definite noun, meaning it's noun. And in Arabic, for example, if I told you, I came with the man, you know what man I am speaking about. And if I I'm telling you the story and I said, and I went with the man. You would understand that I'm still talking about the same man. So in this surah here, when Allah spoke about the hardship, he spoke about it in the definite, i.e. with the same difficulty that is always two solutions. With every problem that you get, the minimum of solutions that come with it are two. But the human being is weak. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you with every problem, with every difficulty, with every calamity, with every hardship, come two solutions bundled up. Look, my dear brothers and my sisters, I'll give you an example. If the calamity was your body, the easiness is your two legs. There is no calamity that is going to come by itself because it cannot walk. It needs two legs. These two legs are the solution. So why do you keep looking at the difficulty and you miss the bigger picture of looking at what solutions carry the problem? Subhanallah, look at it this way. You lost your job? This is the problem, okay? But what is the solution that it brings? It brings two beautiful resolving issues. Maybe it's time to change the career. Maybe you've got like a better job. Maybe, maybe, maybe. So here, never ever look at a problem as a problem. When I was a little kid, I, subhanAllah, I developed an understanding and it is true until today. Whatever happened, I never ever wanted to call anything as a problem. One day I was asked as to why I did that. I told them the only problem is if at the end of it, I'm going to die. That is a problem. Anything else is not a problem. Think of it. 
If somebody holds a gun to your head and say, I'm going to shoot you, that is a problem. Especially when you have not done a lot of good, that is a problem. However, if you go and you don't have money, you're homeless, your family don't like you, you have a problem with your children, you have a problem with your husband, that is not a problem, that is a situation, that is a challenge, and with that challenge and with that difficulties comes what? A solution, not only one, but twice. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you, in those moments, and this is my brothers and my sisters where the majority of Muslims fail. When you're going through hard times, people usually tell me when I don't hear of them a lot in the group or I don't see them, I tell them, what happened to you? They go, lie, I have a lot of problems. I don't, uh, that's why I need to sort out. And they pull away from Islam, from their religion to concentrate on their problems. Big, huge mistake. It is in times of difficulties that you want to be more Muslim than in times of easiness. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in, in this surah here, فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْصَبْ In times of difficulties, when you finish from working out your daily chores, your job, your work, your kids, when at that moment there you finish from all these necessities of life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَانْصَبْ أَنْصَبْ is when you put a pole in the middle of a ground, like you dig a hole for it, and you affirm it, and you make it stand there. Okay? So you plant it and make it there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you, when you finish with the, whatever it is in life you're doing, go home and stand in salat as if you dug a hole to yourself and you became the pole. I.e. Allah says, when you are in times of difficulties, after you remember what I've done for in the past for you, and that whatever you're going through now is not really a hardship, but it is an opportunity disguised as a hardship, and it comes with two solutions, Allah tells you, to get to know these solutions, stand up in a salat Don't be, my dear brothers and my sisters, as a loser. A lot of Muslims pull away from Islam when they have problems. I will not them, I find it really uh, mesmerizing. When people, uh, I tell them, I, I, we don't hear from you much in the group, or I don't see you, I have a lot of problems. So when you have a lot of problems, you pull away, it doesn't work like that. It's the opposite around. I actually once read something. It says, when you cannot pray, you make a ibadah, that is the time when you must pray more. Reverse this. If you cannot carry something heavy, that is the time when you want to carry something heavy to become stronger. If you can't find food, that is the time when you need to work to get food. It's not like I, I have problems, then you pull away altogether. That is the very first big mistake, and that is what shaitan comes to you. Because you know you've got a lot of problems. Look, take a break from your Islam, and when you sort out this one, you come stronger. <laughs> He's got to wear exactly where he wants you from. When Allah tells you, when you have problems, come to me. Finish your job and stand, plant yourself, and worship non-stop. This is why when you have problems, you worship and you become like the donator. Sadaqah, you fast, you pray a lot, you better think, you read Quran, you stand at night and you do all these things. Why? So that the solution becomes clear to you. You do not need the solutions because they already come with the challenge, with the hardship. It's just you ask Allah to guide you to find them. My brothers and my sisters, I swear to Allah, with every challenge that you get, as I said, it comes walking on two legs that are the solutions. When we are going through these things, it's not that we haven't got the solutions. It's just we have not been directed to them. How do you get directed to them? Plant your legs, your feet, and pray to Allah. Make lots of dua, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide you to those things. And then he said, وَإِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ فَرْغَبْ وَإِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ فَرْغَبْ What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here, and to your Rabb. He didn't say, وَإِلَىٰ إِلَهِكَ To your Rabb. And the Rabb here is the one who takes care of you. Our Rabb, the closest translation in English, is the caretaker. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you here, and to your caretaker who is Allah, فَرْغَبْ Desire. Desire him. What this means, my dear brothers and my sisters, if in times of difficulties, I could have a surgery on your heart. The desire in your heart must be Allah, not a car, not getting married, not having food, not having a house, and not having a villa. 
if you can get at times of difficulties that the, the most important element that you want to get close to, it must be Allah. A lot of people speak a lot about, I love Allah. Oh, Islam is the beautiful religion. I do a lot of thinking to Allah. I do a lot of harm to Allah. They just say it words, but when it comes to action, they actually don't do much. A lot of people speak a lot about Islam in WhatsApp groups. <laughs> That's all they do. But when you look at their salat, it sucks big deal. How much do you know about Islam? Not much. How much can you read of Al-Quran? Not much. How much can you do actually of the Adhkar in Arabic? Not much. So why do you talk a lot? And this is where the problems are. The solutions with the challenges are there. Two for one. Two solutions for one challenge, for one problem, or for one situation. But it is us who fail to plant our feet on the ground to worship Allah. And it is us who fail to truly desire Allah. Because once you get to that point there, once you get to that conclusion that you plant your feet in front of Allah and you desire Allah more than the solution to your problems, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you and gives you in a way that you would never ever imagine. So this is what it is, Surat Ash-Shar, Surat the Expansion, the chest, the heart expansion. Follow it. This is how I can summarize for you, and this is how I do it. Every time I have a challenging situation, a problem, whatever it is, I sit down when it happens, and I look back in the past. Have I been through this before? If yes, then I just remember that and how my life had changed so that I start thinking good of Allah. That since he did help me before, he will help me now. And I cut all pathways to a shaitan that he doesn't grandify the problem more than it should. Once I've done that, then I remember and I go, yes, Ya Allah, you've expanded my heart and you've made everything in my chest and my life beautiful. And yes, you have helped me remove the heavy burden that caused that the problems in the past were there and they caused me to happen. And yes, Ya Allah, my status and my everything with other people is extremely beautiful. And now, Ya Allah, Help me in what I am going through now. Ya Allah, help me. Because you promised with every hardship comes two solutions. Help me. And I will plant my feet here to pray and pray and do my salat and do all acts of goodness. Recite the Quran, read the Quran and do all these things until I get to a status where my heart only desires you. And at that moment there, Watch how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will, how he will give you a lot. I promise you a dua that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has mentioned. And this dua is in Musnad al-Imam Ahmad. And it is an authentic hadith. What Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, he said that he was going to teach us these words here. And whoever Muslim, when he feels the heart is tightening, when things are not working, when they feel sorrow and they feel sad, and life is not like, you know, when you feel down, all that kind of stuff. When you make this dua here, Allah will lift your spirit a lot quicker than if you didn't do that dua. The Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, when they heard this hadith, they said, Ya Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, alana ta'allamuha, shouldn't we learn it? Qala, he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, bala, no, you should. Bala yanbaghi liman sami'aha an yata'allamaha. It is upon anyone who hears of this dua that he or she should learn it. And this, as I said, is hadith in Sahih, uh, in Ahmed, and it is authenticated hadith. So here is the dua. I am going to say it slowly and quickly because I don't want to take a long time. One, Allahumma inni abduk. Ya Allah, I am your subservient. Wabnu abdik, son of your subservient. Wabnu amatik, and son of your female subservient. Nasiyati biyadik, my forehead is in your hand. What this means is, Imagine if somebody's forehead was in your hand, i.e. you guide him and you direct him as you please, i.e. I follow whatever you have, uh, I am in your hands, you do with me as you please. And this shows how weak and how dependent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you are. Now then fiya hukmuk, i.e. whatever you have judged that's going to happen to me, it will take place, i.e. what I am feeling right now didn't come by like some kind of whatever it is, but it is something that you have decreed upon me. Adlum fiya qada'uk, and whatever hardship I am going through right now, it is a just act. 
It is a just decree. You have not oppressed me. You have not transgressed against me. You are not doing it. It is something out of justice and I accept it. I ask you with all or any name that is yours. That you called or you named yourself with it. Like Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, and Malik Al-Quddus. But don't translate the names of Allah into English. It's a major sin and Allah won't accept them. You have to say them in Arabic. Don't tell me you don't know. It's time to learn them. And then he said, uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, أَوْ عَلَّمْتَهُ أَحَدًا مِنْ خَلْقِكَ Or oh, you taught this name to any of your subservient, of your creation. أَوْ أَنزَلْتَهُ فِي كِتَابِكَ Or that you have revealed it in your book, Al-Quran, because there are names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are not aware of them. أَوْ اسْتَأْثَرْتَ بِهِ فِي عِلْمِ الْغَيْبِ عِنْدِكَ Or you kept it in the unseen world with you until the day of Qiyamah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will teach some to our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he will reveal other of his names when we are in Jannah. Amen. And what is all this introduction? So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and taj'ala al-Qur'an rabi'a qalbi so that you make al-Qur'an the spring to my heart. What this means is when we are in a state of difficulties, when we are sad, Our heart feels like a dead winner, like there is no life in it at all. So what Rasul Wasallam is teaching us, Ya Allah, if my heart is as dead as a big uh, field in winter, or where the trees and the forest are dead, Ya Allah, make Al-Quran the spring. I.e., it, when I read the Quran, it has the effect on me as a spring has it on forests and trees and everything. So, and تجعل القرآن ربيع قلبي ونور صدري and the light in my heart that the Quran becomes the light of my heart. وجلاء حزني and it takes and it, the chaser of my uh, sadness and the hab hammi and the departure of my anxiety. So, as you can see, this is the hadith. I will be in Allah uh, record it uh, after I finish this pep talk here, and I will post it separately, slowly, word by word, and I encourage you greatly to learn it. So, this is like in a very, 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 very quick, 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 quick. So, here you've got like to sum up how you can sort out your problems. One, whatever problem happens to you, know that it's been written for you, and it is not, nobody can tell if it's punishment or a test. Just take it and don't think about it. Remember the past, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had expanded your chest, had taken and made your heavy burden light, and has raised your status in your family, the community. Remember, that status is still yours. And also remember that any problem needs two legs to walk, and these two legs are the solutions that come with every problem, with every challenge. And to get to these solutions, you must, in times of difficulties, increase your acts of worship. I know a lot of people that get in times of difficulties, and instead of praying much more, they actually decrease. And that's a huge mistake. That's what shaitan wants from you. Decrease your acts of worship. You won't get what you want from Allah. Increase your acts of worship, and Allah will give you what he has promised, i.e. the solutions, two solutions for one problem. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and as you are working your journey towards resolving and asking me to resolve your problem, make sure that your heart, just like your physique, are desiring of Allah. Don't turn into something to something else. Yes, you can use what Allah has given you, but let not your heart love anything else but what Allah can give you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you do that, when you do that, watch how life becomes, how you can get a lot of problems and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will weigh them down. As if they were just a drop of salt in an ocean. How much is that going to change to the already salted oceans? Nothing at all. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us all to that best guidance and to make us of the best Muslims and to those who rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And remember, Surah Al-Sharh, this Surah 94, is about when you cannot, that is the time when you must. When you cannot worship Allah because of problems, that is the time when you want to increase your acts of worship so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you what he has promised and that is the expansion of your chest. This is your brother Abdul Salam Abu Hanifa and uh, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us all to the right guidance. To join my WhatsApp group, please do send me a message with your name at 078 76 
four zero eight seven three five or you can send your messages or you can email me at islampeptalk at gmail.com also on youtube you can go on youtube and just type islam pep talk and you will have access to my previous talks وصلي اللهم على نبينا محمد سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك وجزاكم الله خيرا والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته